The Lord be with you. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they themselves had gone to the feast. Then he returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water into wine. Now there was a royal official there whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, He went to Jesus and asked him to come down and heal his son who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official persisted, saying again, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said, and left. While the man was on his way home, the slaves met him and told him the boy would live. He asked them when he began to recover. They told him, The fever left him yesterday about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time, Jesus said to him, Your son will live. And he and his whole household came to believe. This was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. It's not by accident that the cardinal virtues of faith, hope, and love are really of a piece. Faith is built on hope, and faith is strengthened and brought to maturity in love. God heals, God can heal, but one way or the other, we do play some small or at times a great part in that. We have to at least minimally believe that God can and God wants to. If I were to ask you, do you believe in all that God promises, you would say, well, yeah, yes, of course. We say often enough, seeing is believing. You realize that's not true? To see is to know. If we see it, we don't have to believe because it's right there. We don't see yet what God prophesies through Isaiah. It sounds unimaginable that we are not living the fullness of our lives unless we make it to 100. Good luck with that. It really is uh, an image, again, from God. It's a prophecy. Isaiah is prophesying the word he heard from the Lord that there will come a time, and it is our faith It's really an openness and a hope in the promise of heaven that there will be a new heavens and there will be a new earth and things of the past will be remembered no longer. How great will that be? Etc. There will be great joy in Jerusalem. My people will be my delight. All will rejoice. No longer weeping and crying will not again be heard. Etc. It really is an image. Hard to believe nowadays if you read the free press or listen to the news or follow politics at all. But at the end of the liturgical year in uh, late November, as we turn from the end of the liturgical year into the new season, we hear all the eschatological things of end times, all those readings, and the sun and moon will fall from the sky and people will be terrified. But again, they're just images that all these things have to happen. 
somehow there has to be a renewal, a purification, a salvation, clearly a redemption for all that God has made. That's our faith. And when we don't see it or can't see or see seeing it, then we say, well, I mean, I don't know, is this real or not? Well, yes, it is. It's interesting that all these verses are put together. Uh, we could probably cut this reading into three. But again, I think the point is being made that in Galilee, the home area of Jesus, he was not able to work a lot of miracles because people presumed they knew who he was. You know, hey, we'll believe when we see. Show us a sign. That's frustrating to the Lord because he wants them to believe in himself as a person and to see with their own eyes, which means to see with their hearts that he is the sign and the presence and the action of God. It's quite possible that Jesus would have known this royal official, pretty well understood and accepted, that for a time Jesus may have had a house in Capernaum. He stayed there, was kind of a center of ministry for him, so he would have known the royal official and the synagogue leaders and such folks. So he's traveling around. I wonder what rush hour looked like. People all walking along the roads. No traffic lights needed. You can't move that fast. Where do we pick up that little detail? The guy was on his way back home, and it took him a couple days to get there. When did he show signs of recovery? It was yesterday. So we know he's walked at least, you know, through the night, or he rested at the Holiday Inn and, and had breakfast at uh, uh, Hardee's or Bigger Burger King or somewhere, and then continued his journey. Of course, I just. You don't have to believe that. But any of us would probably do the same as this official whose son is near death. It's clear that he knows Jesus because when he hears that Jesus is back in town, he walks a day and a half or whatever it was so he could plead with Jesus, come and heal my son for he is near death. He says, come. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. He persists, come down please, before my child dies. And then quite immediately, Jesus seems to respond, well, we'll, we'll just go then. Your son will live. What's Jesus doing? He's calling him to faith. You could say Jesus really did nothing. And the guy could say, well, well, come on, you're just putting me off. You don't want to deal with me. I know I'm kind of a pain in your neck, but you really don't want to. You're just telling me to go away. But he doesn't say that. The man believed. Well, what did he believe? He believed because Jesus spoke the word. Your son will live. He didn't see. Jesus didn't go. He didn't lay his hand on him. Didn't say a prayer. He just spoke the word. He believed. It's confirmed again by the interlude of the slaves or the servants coming and passing on the word. You see the power of a word? To discourage or to build up. To give hope or to create fear or discouragement. Again, the confirmation at the end. The guy realized, yeah, yeah, it was just right at that time. He probably checked his Rolex to make sure it was the same time. And uh, that was the time he said the word. And because the word was heard and he believed in it, he and his whole household came to faith. Seeing, of course, is believing. When we see something, it's like, yep, there it is. Now I know. It's a kind of faith. But the faith we're called to have is the faith that does not see that does not always have signs and wonders. The Lord's healings always have some kind of sign, and they are some kind of wonder. Sometimes it's only a word. Sometimes it's a word we miss. Sometimes it's an action. Sometimes it isn't. Ours is to believe. As we journey through these last couple of weeks of the Lenten season, it is a season of renewal of our faith. So we can get a lot of the clutter out of the way, emotional, psychological, spiritual, religious, physical, material things out of the way 
so that, like this royal official, without an actual sign, signs are great, they're wonderful, they're blessing, but without the signs, can we believe? Lord, hear our prayer. Help us to hear your prayer for us and give us eyes to see and hearts to believe.